everybody. This is Eileen Bookestein here. Oh, this is my daughter Lydia joining in the show. Can you sit down and listen? This is our first ever live uh, read along story on elgro.org. And we're happy that you've joined us, that you're here to listen along to the story. We know there's a lot going on right now and that a lot of you are uh, trying to find things to keep yourselves busy and your kids busy and help them to keep learning while they're out of school. And we here at Elgro are hoping to keep providing you with some of the resources that you can use to help your kids keep learning or just to keep them busy. Um, normally this time of year, I would be out visiting students in classrooms and helping with community events, but with all that closed down, um, bringing a lot of my programming to you live online. So um, on Mondays, we will be reading stories together. Uh, that's kind of aimed at the younger set. On Wednesdays, I will be doing some hands-on scientific activities and labs, things that I would normally bring to the classroom and have students do themselves. I'll be demonstrating them for you, usually like at my kitchen table or in my kitchen, and um, telling you how you can do them yourselves. I will post all the materials that you need to do the activities online um, a day or two before so that you can follow along if you want. And then on Fridays, we'll be doing some fun art projects. So stay tuned for all of that if you're interested. But let's get started with our first story. So today we are going to be reading. You might be seeing some cameos from my children. I have three children that I'm at home with. Um, they are uh, excited to be here helping me make these videos. Um, and so you might see them from time to time. So our first story that we are, you can't do that during the video. Sorry, honey. Our first story that we're going to be reading is called Over in a River Flowing Out to the Sea. Now, this story uh, tells us about some of the creatures that live in rivers and why they're important. And uh, it actually is set to the tune of a song. Um, I'm not going to sing it for you because I'm not very good at it. And usually when I sing the same song over and over, um, I forget the tune partway through and it starts to sound bad. If you're following along, I want you to keep an eye on what animals are in here and notice which animals you think you would find in the river near where we live. So the book shows where each animal lives in the United States. Many of these animals live um, in more than one place. So just because the picture on the side says that that animal lives in the Missouri River doesn't mean you can't find it here in the Grand River where we live. So keep your eyes out. There's one animal that we'll see that you will not find in the Grand River. So I would like you, if you catch that animal while I'm reading the story, uh, let me know which animal you think it is, okay? So the book is called Over in a River Flowing Out to the Sea. It's written by Marianne Berkeys and is illustrated by Jill Dubin. It's got really beautiful illustrations. Cut it back away so you don't hit the camera. Sorry. So over in a river flowing out to the sea. Now all rivers flow somewhere. Uh, either to a lake, river, stream, uh, they get flow to a bigger stream, they flow to the ocean. So eventually all rivers flow out somewhere. And the land that drains into that river on its way to a larger body of water is called its watershed. And that's what we work on taking care of. All right, here's the first page. Over in a river where the warm waters run lived a mother manatee and her little calf one. Paddle, said the mother. I paddle, said the one. So they paddled in a river where the warm waters run. See, the map over here shows, this side, which river this animal is maybe most common in. Is this an animal that you think lives in the Grand River? Anybody ever seen a manatee? No. My kids haven't. Over in a river where the cattails grew lived a mother blue heron and her little chicks, too. Stand, said the mother. We stand, said the two. So they stood like statues where the cattails grew. Can you see where this one? Hold on, cameras. Can you see where they said this one lives? <laughs> yeah, this one is listed as living up in the Hudson River. Have you seen a great blue heron before? Yeah. Oh, my kids are saying yes. All right. 
Over in a river flowing out to the sea lived a mother wild salmon and her little smolts three. Splash, said the mother, we splash, said the three. So they splashed down a river flowing out to the sea. Did you know that a baby salmon is called a smolt? Some of you probably do know that because some of you I know do salmon in the classroom. So if you are a student who, when you're at school, does the salmon in the classroom program, you probably knew about smolts. And there might still be some smolts in your classroom if your teacher hasn't released them yet. I would love to hear about your salmon in the classroom and whether or not they have been released. We don't have salmon in our classroom. My kids don't have salmon in their classroom. They're not as lucky as some of you. <clears throat> oh, did I miss a page? No, I didn't. Over in a river, in a nest on the shore, lived a mother mallard duck and her little ducklings four. Waddle, said the mother. We waddle, said the four. So they waddled to a river from their nest on the shore. Of the little mallard ducks. Have you seen mallard ducks in our watershed? Do you think they live here? This map shows the mallard ducks as being common in the St. Lawrence River. And you might not know this, but you can see right here, here's Michigan, the Mitten, here's the Great Lakes, and the St. Lawrence River is the way that the Great Lakes drain out into the Atlantic Ocean. Fun fact for you. Over in a river where they swallowed prey alive lived a mother water snake and her little hatchlings five. Slither, said the mother. We slither, said the five. So they slithered by a river where they swallowed prey alive. Who likes snakes? Anybody like snakes? I think snakes are cool. These are water snakes. This is showing them as being common in the Ohio River. Uh, where have you seen a water snake? Let me know. Over in a river in their lodge built with sticks lived a busy mother beaver and her little kits six. Gnaw, said the mother. We gnaw, said the six. So they gnawed on bark near their lodge built with sticks. Look at those cute little baby beavers. Can you imagine how cute a baby beaver must be? Adorable. And then let's see where the map shows them here as being common in the Colorado River. But I have seen some beavers in our watershed. Let me know if you've seen a beaver and if so, where? Over in a river, darting up toward heaven, lived a mother dragonfly and her dragonflies seven. Whirl, said the mother. We whirl, said the seven. So they whirled above a river, darting up toward heaven. You've probably seen a dragonfly, right? And if you've ever, if I've ever come to your classroom or taken you guys out to a stream, you've maybe seen what dragonflies look like when they're babies. Now this picture shows dragonfly babies as looking just like little dragonflies, but you guys know that a tiny dragonfly, a baby dragonfly, a larva lives in the stream, in the water. And I'm hoping that in a couple weeks when it warms up a little bit, that we are going to be able to go out and do some live stream, stream sampling with you. I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that in a couple weeks when the water uh, when it warms up a little bit. These are shown as being in the Rio Grande River, which is another river that's named as the Grand River. Isn't that cool? But our Grand River is up here, and we see dragonflies there too. Over in a river where they could communicate lived a furry mother muskrat and her little kits eight. Squeal, said the mother. We squeal, said the eight. So they squealed in a river where they could communicate I'm very impressed that the author rhymed communicate with eight. That's some good writing. Look how cute these little guys are. This is the Missouri River. Again, have you seen these in the Grand River? No. I'm seeing some nodding. I heard, I see a nodding head in my house and I heard a no. I've seen them downtown. Over in a river in the warm sunshine lived a mother tree frog and her little froglets nine. Hop, said the mother. We hop, said the nine. So they hopped to a river in the warm sunshine. These frogs are in the Sacramento River. What kind of frogs have you seen near your house? I've I seen bet. a bunch of toads. Oh, May said she's seen a bunch of toads. Any other frogs you guys have seen? Green frogs, leopard frogs. If you go outside at night and you live near water, you probably are hearing frogs right now. Spring peepers, wood frogs. 
lots of things you can learn about frogs. Over in a river where they played in their den lived a father river otter and his little pups ten. Slide, said the father, we slide, said the ten. So they slid in the mud and they played in their den. Look at these cute little river otters. Now, if you've ever been to the zoo, maybe if you live near Grand Rapids, you've been to the John Ball Zoo and you've seen the river otters. Very, very cute, just like these guys. So this picture is showing them in the Mississippi River, but if you're very, very lucky, you might find one in the Grand River watershed as well. This is the last page. Over in a river flowing out to the sea, river animals have homes, swimming wild and flying free. Find the river babies from 10 to one, then go back and start over, because this rhyme isn't done. Over in a river, you can spy with your eyes to find 10 hidden creatures. Every page has a surprise. So if you were looking closely, and if I held the picture close enough, maybe you could find those hidden animals. You're gonna have to rewind the video later and go look for them. Um, but look at this cool map. It shows all the animals that we saw in the story and where they are common, but many of these animals can be found all over the United States and many of them, all of them except one, can be found in the Grand River. Which Who one? knows which animal that was in this story cannot be found in oh, the Grand River watershed. It's not that one. Is it, it is. the manatee? It's not that one. It's the manatee. Manatees live in warm, warm, warmer places than here. So you can't find a manatee here, but you can find all the rest of these animals in the Grand River watershed. Now, if you've never heard the word watershed before, you maybe haven't, that's a new word for you. I have this special picture to show you. This is a cool picture made by a program called Hoosier River Watch in Indiana that takes care of lakes, rivers, and streams down there. Uh, and this is a picture of what a watershed is. You can see we have this river, the main stem of the river, and it has these little streams or tributaries that enter it. And you can see around the river, there are um, mountains and hills and higher places. And when you connect all those higher places, that makes kind of a bowl. Doesn't this look like a bowl shape? And when rain falls on that bowl, some of it's gonna fall into the center of the bowl and some of it's gonna fall outside the bowl. So all that area inside the bowl is the watershed for this river. And if it falls out here, it goes into a different watershed of a different river or lake or stream. So we're gonna be reading stories all throughout the rest of this time where we're stuck at home, uh, learning about watersheds and about lakes, rivers and streams and the creatures that live in them. I would love it. If you would pick an animal from this story, whoop, upside down, if you would pick an animal from this story and come back and put a comment on this video later and tell me about which one was your favorite and what you learned about that animal besides what its babies are called from this video. I think that would be wonderful. And oh, oh my goodness, look, I have some little friends entering the video. Who are you guys? Who are, what? I have some fish sock puppets entering my video right now. And they want me to tell you something. Hold on, hold on, what is it? Oh, these fish puppets want me to tell you that if you wanna learn how to make a fish puppet, you should come back on Friday at one o'clock and that they will teach you, with some help from me, how to make your very own fish video, or your, not fish video, fish puppet. And maybe they'll even do a fish puppet show for you. I don't know. These fish are some very special fish called sturgeon that we'll learn a little bit more about when we make the sturgeon puppets. All right, you guys can get out of here for now. Get out of here. And if you have older children who want to learn to do some science activities or hands-on demonstrations, join me on Wednesday where we are going to be creating some models. And we're going to use just stuff that you can find in your very own kitchen at home because... You guys are all stuck at home right now. So don't go out and buy anything special for this. I guarantee you're gonna be able to do this project with what I, what you have at home. If you have any questions, any kinds of stories you wanna hear, anything you wanna learn about, about lakes, rivers, and streams, or the Grand River watershed, while we are here at our homes trying to learn from home, please let me know. Go ahead and leave a message or set, um, or leave a comment on the post or send a message to Elgro's site. Elgro's Facebook page. Oh, we got one more 
fish that had to make it in. There he is. Yeah. Thank you, Lydia. Send us a message and let me know, and I'll be happy to do my best. And if you're a teacher who I've worked with and I've been in your classroom and you were like, you know, it was really fun was that thing you did last year, and you want me to try to do it on a video, I'm up for the challenge. So just let me know. Um, it was great to see you guys. I hope that we're able to stay in touch and that you're able to learn a little bit throughout this time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon. One last thing. If you are looking for more resources about watersheds and learning about water with your kids, there's a really cool organization called Project Wet. And they have a website called Project Wet, just the word project, W-E-T dot O-R-G. And they have some free resources on their website right now for you to download. They have a huge curriculum guide that teachers can use in the classroom. And they have a bunch of those uh, lesson plans online free right now that you can download to use with your kids at home. Um, I'll be demonstrating a few of those activities for you in the coming weeks as well. So thank you guys. It was so much fun to see you and to share my little kids learning experience with you. Say, say bye bye. We'll see you guys soon.